No, I think, listen, we're, we're obviously going through a, a, a tough spell. And the analogy I use to the guys is we start the season off with a win. We're on a, we're on a cruise ship. Right now, we find ourselves in a rowboat, which it's all in our control. We just got to row in the same direction, you know, and I think, you know, coming back home is a great opportunity to, to, to row in the same direction. And this league is a, is a, is a league of streaks. Um, and, and I think the stronger teams are the ones that find their way out of these moments. And so for us, it's, it's, it's not tactical, it's not technical, it's emotional, spiritual, psychological. It's the human being behind who's wearing the jersey. And we gotta, we gotta dig deep this week and really bring out the fighter in us, the mentality that we've had. Um, again, because you don't go from a team that punches above the weight the last two years to all of a sudden being a poor team. Doesn't make any sense, right? But what does change? Emotions. And how, what does that affect? Behaviors, right? So we got to get to the emotional component, the human being, bring that out. We got great players. We got to score, got to defend better. But I think if you, if, if you can reach into the human being, you, you're going to be able to affect the player. You've started a lot of different guys over the last two or three weeks. Do you use these training sessions to figure out which 11 are prepared to do that? Do you, do you have an idea right now? Not that you tell us, but do you have an idea or it's all going to be dependent on what happens later this week? Well, you know, I think it's, it's incumbent upon me to have individual conversations with each player, right? And I think it's important not for me to speak to them, but more them to speak to me, right? And, and I think through those individual conversations, through the training week, we'll have a really good idea of where everyone's mind's at to put the best group on the field to, to, to get a result in the weekend. You've talked a lot about the way to defend, the way to react when you lose the ball. It looked like Columbus was very comfortable on the ball for most of the game. Was that the way you needed to play on the road in that match, or was that something you were disappointed in? No, I think, again, again, when you're at home, it's a different game, right? And, and we knew that they were going to have a lot of the ball. I, I think for us, for me, which w w what was frustrating is, um, we want to give them the ball. Let them connect 400 passes in their half. We have certain triggers that we're looking for to change our pace, um, but we got antsy and we started moving forward without putting real pressure on the ball, without being able to affect the man on the ball. And in doing so, we opened up our gaps, which is exactly what they wanted, which is why they had so much freedom and, and time. So, um, and, and again, why doesn't the tactical part of the game be expressed the way you think it is. And it's because it's the emotion. It's the desire to try to right a wrong right now, as opposed to playing the game for 90 minutes and managing moments. And so the psyche of the human being will always affect the tactical, the technical. Um, and so again, that's what happens when you're in a bad run of form. So for, for us, really important that, and I talked about it after the game, that we stick to the plan and trust the plan. Don't get antsy playing for 90 minutes. Can't win the game in one minute. Can't lose the game in one minute. Were there any moments in that that would give you something to build on going forward? Yeah, there was, there was a lot of moments. I think there was a lot of moments when we defended the right way, where we won the ball back. I think there's a lot of great attacking opportunities. I, I wouldn't say a lot. There was one where we, uh, Chang had one early on. And again, you score that goal, the whole complexity of the game changes, the whole complexion of the game changes. Um, and then we had, uh, you know, we had a 3v1 that we didn't execute. Uh, we had some good uh, combination play at the top of the box that we didn't finish on. So there's, there's a lot of good things. But when it's so dark uh, from a result perspective, all that gets clouded and everyone wants to throw the baby out with the bathwater. But again, it's a process that we have to stay on to get to where we want to go. And, and again, score the first goal, defend the right way, and we'll win the game. You gave a couple of young guys a chance. What did you see from Elijah Paul before you took him off? Um, listen, I, I saw a lot of industry. I, I saw, you know, a, a player that has earned the opportunity to play based upon the way he's trained. Obviously with him um, and Beavers alike, you know, experience is, is, is going to be the biggest question. And, and the way you gain experience is by making mistakes. Um, the game is obviously fast. Again, we played on a wet field. We haven't trained outside all year. And so that was a big difference for him as well, being able to control the ball differently than he does on turf. Um, so there's a lot of variables that go into it, but I thought his effort was fantastic. And uh, again, young player that has uh, a, a lot of potential to be a great pro in this league. And obviously along the way has a lot to work on to get there. And what did you see from Gavin Beavers? Yeah, again, a, a tough situation to th put him in on the road. Um, but he was, uh, you know, he's, he's a player that was coming back with a lot of confidence from Argentina with the U19s. Um, and, you know, there's some, some nervy moments for sure. Um, but I, I think overall, he, he, you know, the, the one part of his game 
that uh, I feel that needs to continue to get better is distribution, and I thought he did a pretty decent job in, in decision-making, when to play, when to go long. I thought he did a really good job. Came up trumps on, I think, one big save. Um, and then there's some other things that we have to continue to work on. But I, I think with both those guys, um, they're guys that have earned, earned the right based upon the way they train, and we know that uh, it's going to be some time before they fully adjust to the speed of the game at this level. There are a lot of players who could play better, and I don't want to single anyone out, which is what you say before you single somebody out. So here I go. Uh, but I think because this guy's been really good on the ball, it's obvious to the fans that something isn't right. It's one of the easier part of the games to see. And that's Brody in the final third. Passes he used to connect, deadly service that he would provide, and now it seems like something's off. Either he's trying to force a ball into a channel and it's, there just isn't space, or he mishits a ball. How do you work with him? Because clearly he's capable of doing it. We've seen it, even though he's not doing it now. Yeah, I would say, I think it's a two-part thing. I, I think with Brody, and I said this last year about Rubio, he didn't have a preseason. So Brody played all his minutes towards the end of the preseason. And when you don't go through the preseason, it's the psychological and the physical strength that you build in those six weeks. He didn't have that, right? And so looking back, I'm thinking he missed a lot of weight sessions because he had a quad injury. Um, and the strength that you get. And so I think that's the biggest component because then it's the technical aspect and tactical aspect. And if you don't have the strength, then executing those becomes harder. And then obviously the bigger picture is when you're in a bad run of form as a team, uh, you start forcing plays. When he's operating from his best self, he's making better decisions as, as we all are. You know? So I think it's incumbent upon all of us to really come together and, uh, you know, and, 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 figure, and, and figure out, and, and this is what I said at halftime, simplify the game. You guys are making too many decisions that aren't there. Just play the game. You know, we talked about where the spaces are gonna be. Now you have to find them. If they're not available, then we rotate and we find the next, the next option to play forward. But too often, we, we do a great job of getting into the final third, but we let ourselves down decision-making wise in that final third, which is, which is you know, what, where our biggest problem lies. Severino wasn't with the team. Will he be with the group this week? Is he going to be available Saturday? Is that all up in the air? Um, yeah, I think we're going to take it day, day by day. Um, but, you know, he's out here trained on Saturday. Um, and he trained today. So, you know, I don't want to project too far in the future. But, you know, my expectations are that uh, he'll be available for Saturday. Going back to Kevin a little bit, he's been a really fast riser through his youth career with the national team, club team here. Uh, Monarchs a couple years ago, that kind of thing. What is it about him that you kind of saw that spark, I guess, coming off of U19 camp where, where you thought he sort of deserved a, a shot to see what he can do in MLS play with, with Bullets Live? Well, no, I think it's it's a process that's been going on since last year. He's been training with us and, and playing with us, played some preseason games, played well. Um, so it's not just this moment. Uh, obviously, I, I think a big part of that was, you know, taking four the game before. Um, that kind of opened up a little bit of window to kind of make a change to see you know where where we can make incremental gains um, positionally um, but but again I think he's he's been a player that's been consistent um, over the course of the last whatever it's been eight months um, and again when you're playing with the national team you always you always play with a bit of confidence when you come back um, and so th that was the thought process behind putting Gavin in the goal goalkeepers are ultimately judged by how many goals they give up. It's the nature of the position. And, and for i I'm sure there will be plenty of tape to dissect on him. But I thought he did a lot of really good things that maybe won't always get noticed. What do you kind of tell him, coach him up, I guess, after giving up four goals, yes, but also kind of being able to, to sort of highlight the good things so that his confidence doesn't get, yeah. doesn't get shot, I guess. Yeah, no, I think uh, obviously when you make a goalkeeper change, it's, it's, not, it, it's tough to make it for one game. Uh, knowing, especially in this case, it's, it's a young goalkeeper and uh, doesn't have a wealth of uh, first team experience. And the way I like to spring goalkeeping, it, it isn't how many goals you get scored on, it's making the saves you should make. Not making the saves you shouldn't make, right? And, and if you look at that, there's probably one of those goals where I would say, um, you know, he, he, he could have done better with. The other ones were, you know, no one's gonna really, it's gonna be hard to make those saves. So. Um, you know, I think, you know, obviously he's, he's a bit bummed out that he couldn't do more. Um, but, but at the end of the day, it's a, it, it's a collective. We, we score goals as a team and, and we concede goals as a team. Good. All right, Thanks, Pablo. All right guys. Thanks, yeah. Pablo. Appreciate it. Just, we need it for this camera. Yeah. But can you just talk a little bit about 
coming back home and looking ahead to this weekend? Yeah. You know, I think coming back. What's that? Sorry. You want to? You want to? You want to be there so I can? If you want to just look at me. Yeah. It does make it easy. Yeah, it does. I don't know why nobody else cares about Charlotte, but I do. Um, so Pablo, obviously, you know, uh, tough month, but three out of four games in April at home, starting Saturday uh, against Charlotte. Just, I guess, kind of talk about uh, what you're looking to get to in front of uh, 18,000 home fans. Yeah, no, I think it's important for us to come home and, and really uh, play a complete game. You know, I think we've had some good halves at home. I, I think it's uh, really important to have a fighter mentality to show our quality, you know, and I think our fans have always been the catalyst to everything we've done the last couple of years. Um, and so playing at home after some poor results on, you know, on the road, coming back and, and really bringing the fans on their feet, really getting them involved and uh, using this game as, as a benchmark of a difficult start, but a great beginning to the next, uh, the next phase of the season. Yeah, and how's, I guess, just generally, how's the chatter around the team inside the locker room with guys really staying together and knowing that they got to kind of fight through a difficult period. Yeah, no, I think it's tough for, for, for anybody or any team to go through a spell where, where you can see, where you lose four games in a row. Um, but the one thing, and I've talked about this years past, we have a great leadership group, right? And the, 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 the most important thing is sport is when, when you're winning, you don't get too high. And when you lose, you don't get too low. Obviously it's, it, it's a tough moment, but when you have guys that, you know, that, that, echo that same sentiment, that stay even keeled, that know the work has to be done Monday through Friday if the performance is going to be good on Saturday. And I think today's training session was a reflection of the mentality of the group, the chatter, the communication, the energy, the fight. Um, all those things have to, be, have to be present in order to carry that on to Saturday. And I saw all that today. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome, brother.